hello students i hope you all will be fine here we start chapter 3 topic name in ship class and caste the chapter is too long with its objective so we will try to understand it in part wise in first part i am trying to take these three points the critical condition of mahabharata kinship and marriages and social differences here we start our chapter although the chapter name is kinship class and caste yet the chapter is totally discussed about mahabharata most the reason behind is its significance to know indian history as you will see each text was written form of the perspective of special social categories so we need to keep in mind who composed and what he composed and for whom we also need to consider the languages used in it and the ways in which the text circulated used carefully text allow us to piece together attitudes and practices that shape the social histories the first topic is the critical condition of mahabharata one of the most ambitious project of scholarship began in 1919 under the leadership of a noted indian sanskrit v s suthankar a team comprising dozens of scholars initiated the task of preparing a critical edition of mahabharata what exactly did this involve students initially it meant collecting the sanskrit manuscripts of the text written in a variety of scripts from different part of the country you know the team worked out a method of the comparing verses from each manuscript ultimately they selected the verses that appeared common to most versions and published these in several volumes running into over 13000 pages and this project took 47 years to complete in a sense these variations are reflective of the complex processes that shaped early social histories through dialogues between the dominant traditions and resilient local ideas and practices these dialogues are characterized by the moments of the conflict as well as the consensus in this map you are able to see kuru panchala regions and the neighboring areas mahabharata provides us a proper study of the indian history from sirsa 600 bce to sirsa 600 ce students in your text books it is mentioned sirsa 500 bce to sirsa 500 ce it gives it provide us 100000 uh, to 1200 years history now we will start the main chapter the main topic of the chapter that is kinship and the marriage children we often take the family life for granted however we may have noticed that not all not all families are identical they vary in terms of numbers of members their relationship with one another as well as the kinds of activities they share often people belonging to the same family share food and other resources and live work and perform rituals together 
families are usually parts of larger networks of people defined as the relatives children can be identified the points when the kinship relations changed yes it comes under the topic of the paternally what does it mean paternally paternally means in tracing descent from father to son grandson and so on maternally is the is the use in term of when descent is traced through the mother now we will discuss the another topic that is rules of marriage while sons were important for the continuity of the paternal lineage daughters were viewed rather differently within the framework they had no claims to the resources of the household at the same time marrying them into families outside the kin was considered desirable the system called exogamy meant that the lives of young girls and the women belonging to the families that claimed high status were often carefully regulated to ensure that they were married to the right time to the right person this gave rise to the belief that the kanya dana or gift of a daughter in marriage was an important religious duty of a father some of the type of marriages we will see here first is endogamy endogamy refers to marriage within a unit this could be a kin group caste or a group living in the same locality next is exogamy exogamy refers to marriage outside the unit monogamy it is the practice of a man having one wife polygamy when the one man will have two or more than two wives and the polyandry when the one woman will have two or more than two husbands this kind of the examples we found in this chapter in the form of the rani draupadi rules of the marriages were mentioned in dharm sutra dharm shastra and manusmriti the text recognized as many as forms of marriages of these the first four were considered as good as they were arranged by parents and other were condemned as they were not practiced brahmanical norms our next topic is gotra rules for women first of all we'll try to understand the meaning of the gotra gotra means it's a practice which is the surname practice of the brahmanical we find the evident from sirsa 1000 bc onwards was to classify people in terms of the gotras each gotras was named after vedic brahman and all those who belong to the same gotra were regarded his as descendants two rules about gotra were particularly important and they, those two rules were women had to give up their father's gotra and adopt their husband's gotra women or others could not marry in same gotra but we find some exception here you will find in your textbooks some examples given in the satvana dynasty where we find a name like raja gotmi putra satkani raja vashishti putra sri pulyami raja gotmi putra sri children we will discuss now the another topic 
social differences within and beyond the framework of caste children you are probably familiar with the term of caste which is which refers to a set of hierarchical order social categories the ideal orders was laid down in the dharma shastra and dharma sutra brahman claimed that the order in which they were ranked first while placing groups classified as shudras and untouchables at the very bottom of the social orders positions within the order were supposedly determined by the birth here we will first discuss about the right occupation this dharma shastra and the dharma sutra also considers rules about the ideal occupation of the four categories or varnas brahmans were supposed to study and teach vedas perform sacrifices and get sacrifices performed and give and receive the gifts kshatriyas were to engage in warfare protect people and administer justice study the vedas get sacrifices performed and make gifts the last three occupations were also as is assigned to the vishyas who were in addition expected to engage in the agriculture pastoralism and trade shudras were assigned only one occupation that of the serving the three higher varnas non kshatriyas kings according to the shastra only kshatriyas could be the kings however several important ruling lineages probably had different origins the social backgrounds of the mauryans who ruler who ruled over a larger empire has been hotly debated while later buddhist texts suggested they were kshatriyas brahmanical texts describe them as being of below origin the shudras and the kanvas immediate successor of the mauryas were the brahmins in fact the political power was effectively upon to anyone who could muster support and resources and really depended on birth of a kshatriyas other rulers such as shak who came from central asia were regarded as malichas barbarians or outsiders by the brahmins it is also interesting that the the non ruler of satvana dynasty uh, gotmi putra shatkani claimed to be a birth to a unique brahman and as destroyer of the pride of kshatriyas as we can see from these example integration with the framework of the caste was often a complicated process of caste was often complicated process the satvana claimed to be brahmins whereas according to the brahmins kings ought to have been kshatriyas students on the basis of the today's lecture complete the given assignment